Hello everybody, I'm here today to talk to you about Silver Surfer Epic Collections, and in particular this one here, Volume 5, The Return of Thanos, which is now in stores. Uh, you'll want to check this one out, it's a very great volume, but let's take a quick peek inside and then we'll come back afterward for an overview of all of the Silver Surfer Epic Collections. Okay, here's our look inside Silver Surfer Epic Collection Volume 5, The Return of Thanos. There's the spine art for you. Back cover. Half of this volume is the end of the Steve Englehart run as they wrap up the ongoing war between the Kree and the Skrull in this massive storyline that's been going on since volume three of these epic collections. Ron Lim is the artist here who does amazing work as usual. And then after the war is over, Silver Surfer goes around and meets up with a few old friends, some old flames, meets some new characters, has a run in with, you know, super powered cosmic beings of all kinds. And seriously, some of this stuff is just a sight to behold. Absolutely incredible. Just look at this sequence alone. But then we get into the meat of the book halfway through, which is Jim Starlin returning to the cosmic Marvel Universe, this time in the pages of Silver Surfer, bringing back his main character, Thanos. He's setting the stage for the Infinity Gauntlet, which is going to be coming up in a few volumes from now. But it all begins here. Everything that he has planned starts with these few issues here, which have been collected before, but now they're being presented alongside all of the other issues just for historical context, uh, plus any of the fill-ins that didn't get uh, reprinted in those as well. We're going to see the return of Drax, return of a whole bunch of characters, and at the very end of this book is a graphic novel called The Enslavers by Stan Lee and Keith Pollard. And this is just beautiful stuff. Look at this artwork. As if the Jim Starlin stuff wasn't enough, this graphic novel is just breathtaking. It looks like so much fun. I haven't read it yet, so I can't comment on the story, but boy, am I excited to read it. So how are we doing with the Silver Surfer Epic Collections? We're actually doing pretty good. We've got most of the volumes with just a few remaining. We've got this volume here, volume one, When Calls Galactus, which is actually a collection of all of these early appearances of Silver Surfer, including his first appearance during the coming of Galactus storyline in Fantastic Four. Most of these are partial issues or entire issues of Fantastic Four, as we were introduced to the character of Surfer and as his character was developing in these early years. And after that, we have our first gap. It's volume two, which is going to be Silver Surfer's entire first uh, ongoing series, which was written by Stanley and John Buscema. We don't have a date for that. It hasn't been announced. We don't know when it's coming, but so you'll have to stay tuned for that one. After Silver Surfer's first series wrapped up, he lay dormant for a while. Stanley didn't really want anybody using him. And so he just kind of soared around the Earth's atmosphere because he wasn't even allowed to leave Earth. It wasn't until the 80s when Stanley finally allowed another ongoing series to come about that Steve Englehart decided to break Silver Surfer away from the Earth and let him explore the skyways once again. And so now we have Volume 3, Freedom, and Volume 4, Parable, where Silver Surfer goes off and rejoins the rest of the cosmos. He goes back to his original home, Zen La, he meets up with Galactus again, and he gets involved in the second Kree Skrull War. And that big story is mainly what comprises all of these volumes uh, and even part of the volume five. One of my favorite parts of volume four here is the two part miniseries called Parable, which was written by Stanley and drawn by French illustrator Mobius. I love Mobius' work, and to see him doing American Marvel comics is an absolute joy. And that brings us to the rebirth of Thanos, which we've already talked about earlier in this video, so I guess I don't need to go over that again. And continuing on with the Infinity Saga, we have this volume here, Thanos Quest, where Thanos actually gets all of the Infinity Gems. It's a great two-part story that doesn't feature Silver Surfer at all, but it's essential to the ongoing narrative that's, that Jim Starlin is unfolding in these pages of Silver Surfer. After that, we see the return of all of Jim's favorite characters like Adam Warlock and Drax and Gamora, and he's setting the stage for the Infinity Gauntlet, which is the title of Volume 7. Now this volume doesn't include the actual Infinity Gauntlet miniseries, but it does include all of the tie-in issues. At this time, uh, Silver Surfer was going bi-weekly, and so there are a lot of Infinity Gauntlet tie-ins in here. 
In fact, that makes up pretty much the bulk of this volume. After Jim Starlin finishes his Infinity story, he jumps off of Silver Surfer to explore the world of Adam Warlock, and Ron Mars, his protege, takes over. And here's where we have a gap. We don't have Volume 8 yet, and this is going to be a big story called The Herald Ordeal. We don't know when it's coming, hasn't been announced yet, but we can move on to Volume 9, which is called Resurrection. Silver Surfer makes a bunch of cosmic friends in this volume, including Jack of Hearts and Beta Ray Bill and a whole bunch of others as they go through the cosmic universe and try to stop people like Terax and Morg and Tyrant, you know, all of these cosmic-powered bad guys. There is a four-issue miniseries in here written by Jim Starlin called Resurrection, which deals with some of the aftermath of the Infinity War, plus a very important story for the life of Silver Surfer. Then we have a three-volume gap. We don't have anything from volume 10, 11, or 12. Haven't been announced, don't know when they're coming. But we do have this one here, volume 13, Inner Demons. If you're skipping right from Resurrection to Inner Demons, you'll see a definite change in style as now we are firmly in the late 90s with Silver Surfer. This is mostly J.M. DeMatteis' run on the title when he takes Silver Surfer and starts to explore a little bit about who he is and, uh, and what his purpose is in life, which honestly is what all Silver Surfer comics are like. In this volume, Silver Surfer is going through sort of an identity crisis. He's been stripped of all of his emotions and he's trying to figure out how he can relate to anything, basically. And this is the post-Onslaught era of the Marvel Universe, which means all of Earth's heroes are kind of taken out of the picture. So he goes to Earth to try to help out, and he meets up with Alicia Masters. And together, they go on a journey to try and help Silver Surfer figure out who he is. And they do that in outer space, among other places. Uh, Silver Surfer is going to meet up with a bunch of his, his buddies from the past, as well as some of the villains he's fought numerous times, like Mephisto. And after this, we have a volume 14 that has been recently announced. It's called Sunrise Shadow Fall, and it's going to wrap up all of the remaining issues of this Silver Surfer series, and it's also going to have a few things that come after it. This could possibly be the end of the classic Silver Surfer line. There are a few other miniseries and a short ongoing series that come after that, and that could possibly be a volume 15, but it could also possibly be the start of the Silver Surfer modern era epic collections. We'll have to see how Marvel's going to decide to handle that. So thanks everybody for watching this video and paying attention to everything that I had to say about Silver Surfer Epic Collections. I hope you had a great time watching it. I had a great time making it for you. We'll see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,